Um, I started collecting in 1992. Uh, I was still very young. Um, basically, I was fortunate enough to be surrounded by art. My father had a very small collection of watercolors, manansalas and all, but very small, maybe just about six pieces in the house. And he would occasionally bring home uh, another watercolor from another artist and all that. So we were growing up around art, so to speak. Um, but I did begin to go to museums, to galleries, but didn't make the purchase till 1992 when my father asked me to join him. He was asked to cut a ribbon for a show uh, by Cordoba. Cordoba, he still paints up to now. It was in the Ayala Museum. And uh, I was so smitten by the work, the cover piece, I begged the artist to sell it to me. And he did, because it was reserved. He did sell it for me for 8,000 pesos. I still have the work, it's in the office. So that's basically how I started. Uh, good, good morning. Uh, basically, I'm, a, um, I'm not really an art collector. I'm just a collector. I like collecting stuff. Um, before I started collecting art, I was into scooters. I was collecting Vespas and Lambretas. And then I was uh, collecting a lot of animals, exotic animals, snakes, uh, reptiles. Uh, I was also collecting chairs, uh, mid-century modern chairs. But art, not so much. This uh, art collection started in, uh, when I met my wife in the year 2000, and she gifted me with an Arturo Luz. Kaleng, no? Good gift, oh my, talaga. She gifted me with, with a huge Arturo Luz, and that. And then I said yes to my wife. But she wanted to buy me, eh. and uh, she did. <laughs> no, but she did, and I got so excited. And since I, I really am an artist, by the way, I live in Malate, grew up in Malate, I'm friends with all the visual artists. I was into theater then and ballet. And then there was a cafe in Malate called uh, Penguin Cafe, which uh, was the most popular cafe in the, in the 80s and 90s. And I would hang out there all the time. So I, I became, hi, Fernando. Fernando's here. And Kit, hi, Kit. So I, I befriended all these artists. Uh, I met Santi Bose and all the, more, the, the, the senior artists. But since I knew them, it became easy for me to connect to them when I, when I decided to finally uh, uh, collect art. And I was also blessed to meet this person uh, uh, back then who was so connected to the art scene, who had good taste and was respected by everyone, Bobby Valenzuela. It's his birthday today, actually. Yeah, he passed away uh, 10 years ago. But it's his birthday today, and, I was in, and he was guiding me all throughout those years when I was actively collecting. It was through Bobby that I met uh, Elmer Borlongan. Um, I met all the surrounded by water artists, namely Geraldine Navier, Louis Cordero, Yasmin Sison, um, all because of uh, Bobby's advice. And I, I owe a lot. If, if, if people say that what I have, what, what, what I collect are, are good pieces, it's mainly because of that person, because of Bobby Valenzuela. I was in med medical school. I was a student. I was... Uh Although I had always been, I had always been interested in art and what you know how people expressed it, you know, from from very young I I drew my own stuff and I remember as a child I used to, I remember seeing in in newspapers the sculptures of Arturo Luz, the folded metals, the paperclip, and I would make my own paperclips and put them you know above my head in at the, on my bed and stuff. But I never really thought of collecting. I, but I had always been a fan of, of what artists uh, did. No? Um, and then when I went to medical school, I went to UERM, my dean in the college was Dr. Hoven Kuanang. <laughs> so so, so I, Kuanang and I bonded, and you, we hung out, and he brought us to his house in Antipolo. He didn't have a gallery then. And then, before I graduated, he opened his gallery, Boston. So we would go to Boston for the free drinks because, you know, we were students we had no money to buy with. And he kept telling us, Rico, since you're here every opening anyway, you might as well buy art. Because, do I have no money? So yeah, he goes, I'll give you 12 months to pay. I said, really? <laughs> so I said, sí, puede. So I bought my first work from, from Boston. That was uh, Jim Orenzo. Jim, Jim's maybe first or second show. Yeah, so I was, you know, I'd be hanging out with, uh, with Laton Iliano, with the people from Antipolo, and then I went to PGH. In PGH, I was hanging with Neil Oshima, and 
on my on my off time, I was living in, inside the hospital, in in Philippine General Hospital. The 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 work when you're on duty at the emergency room is so grueling that they actually ask you to leave from 6 p.m. and then you come back at midnight, you know, and you know, recharged hopefully. So he, they ask you to leave at six, you know, have a nice dinner, have a nice shower, have a nap, come back at midnight para you know. Raring to go again at the emergency room. Ako, instead of doing that, I'd walk to Malate. <laughs> I'd walk to Penguin, have a few drinks with Nilo Shima, and come back to the emergency room slightly full. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I did that. But through the Malate connection also, I, I, I met, because they all lived in a building in North, in North Sikia. So everybody knew each other. So we'd walk up to Kim's... Uh, apartment, I said, oh my God, who, who in Manila has mid-century modern chairs? I mean, that was like 90. So we go, who's this Kim Etienza? Let me, I want to meet him. <laughs> so I met Kim in the, in the, that was mid-90s also. And um, so after, and then, so because I was in the Philippine general also, during my breaks, so when it was really, really difficult to dealing with, you know, sick children and dying patients, I'd walk to the gallery of Bobby. What was the name again? Yeah, yeah. Hiraya. Hiraya Gallery, Bobby, Bobby and DDD. And that's also where I, where I bought my first Elmer Berlohan, actually, which I absolutely adore. Um, and then Bobby was also very nurturing in that aspect that he, he would get to know you and find out what you're really into. And he would just say, Doc, you should take a look at this. So he was nurturing a, an alcove series of new artists. He called it a discovery series. So he would scout around Manila, the, around the art schools, looking at you know, students' work. And if he sees potential, he goes, why don't you show this at the alcove and in Hiraya Gallery? So those, as a student, those were the ones which were affordable to me, right? It just so happened that those students showing there were Geraldine Javier, uh, everyone, everyone. So I would buy Geraldine's first works. <laughs> And then Geraldine was so shocked that, what, somebody bought my work? Because they were pages from her diaries. She would convert her old books in art school into visual diaries, paint all over them, make them into collages. So the, the thin books would end up very, very thick. So she, re she refused to part with these visual diaries. So Bob goes, we have to show them to people, you know? So there was this new technology then, which was, the colored Xerox, which is not very dependable. But so they colored Xeroxes uh, of, of, of Geraldine Javier's diaries, put them in the alcove, and I bought some of those who, unfortunately, after like six months, they faded. <laughs> but nevertheless, so Geraldine was so, so surprised now. Oh my God, somebody bought my work. That's so cool. But I, ne I only met Geraldine maybe f 10 years later. And because she was so thankful that somebody had bought, she gave me the diary, <laughs> the whole diary. So she said, okay. <laughs> so that's how I kind of started. So, but uh, from the beginning, as a, I never really considered myself as a collector. I mean, not by, not by any conventional standard of what a collector is, but I do maintain that I'm an ardent fan of contemporary art and what kids do. And I, I love the idea that there's someone out there who will tell them, wow, you're you're doing something really interesting and I have never seen anything like that.